Hello, good afternoon. Let's go through the economic way of thinking. The economic way of thinking is a framework to think about economics, to think about the, the world around us, the economy, uh, and some generally, generally accepted principles. Okay, so they're mostly uh, accepted by uh, mainstream economists, and uh, there's different versions of them. Uh, I like the version here in the Principles of Microeconomics by uh, Greg Mankiw. He's a professor at Harvard. Uh, there's other versions of this that are slightly different, but they all have the same main ideas in them. So, uh, you know, economics really started out as a philosophy. Uh, how do we make the most people happy is one part of that. Um, what helps people, so on and so forth. So these are the these are the ten principles mostly agreed on by modern economists. Okay. Uh, by the way, Greg Mankiw has a blog. It's pretty good. He'll show up on. Um, you know, important things. He's a mover and shaker. He might show up on your podcast or whatever. Um, pretty interesting stuff uh, from him, and he may end up there at some point. So the first one is we recognize that people face trade-offs. I mean, trade-off is something you give up when you make a choice, right? So right now, by listening to me, there's a thousand other things you could be doing, right? Hopefully, you're you are listening. And you're not doing one of those thousands of other things. But um, you know, every time we make a choice, but you cho choose to take a class at Pima. Uh, you're giving up lots of other things you could be doing. If you choose to take a class at ASU, you're giving up classes at, at U of A. If you eat chicken for dinner, you're giving up, uh, you know, peanut butter, jelly, beef, whatever, the, the hundreds of thousands of other things, right? So um, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty standard stuff, not too bad, okay? Um, now, we frame this usually in, a, in terms of like a family. Uh, where we're going to use the term household. So a household's deciding on a new car purchase. What trade-offs do they face? So you think about that for a second. In this family, they, they face all the other things they could do with that money, right? New washing machine, save it for the future, uh, kids' college fund, uh, go out to eat a bunch of times. You know, there's just tons of things that they could do. So they, they face these trade-offs, right? Um, now, you can also think about it in terms of government, right? So a lot of one of the complaints here in Tucson is that people complain about the roads. The roads are no good. Uh, and when we think about this, um, it's important to think about, well, there's, there's other things that we could be paying for, right? So if we pay for fixing the roads, then it's less money goes to the library, the zoo, the airport, uh, you know, the, the hundreds of thousands of other things that the city could uh, spend its money on, okay? Um, so there you go. In, in debating road funding, uh, we face all the other things that we could be paying off. It makes policy very difficult, right? But you can see it here in our town, right? Our town has chosen other things to pay money on, perhaps a streetcar or something like that, and uh, it's less money that goes towards the roads. Um, one way to think about this is, is to think about your morning, right? You made a choice this morning, and you could get up when the alarm goes off right away, or you could do what I do and hit the snooze, right? In each of these, uh, there's, there's trade-offs that goes with this, okay? Let's see if I can use the, the pen here. So choice number one is to get up right when uh, the alarm goes off. So let's think about some some benefits that might be there, right? So if I get up right there, I'm, I'm gonna be not as rushed. Okay, I'm gonna have more time for, and you could fill in, right? If it's eating breakfast, if it's uh, showering, putting on makeup, uh, playing with your kids, watching cartoons, whatever it, whatever it actually is, right? Now if you hit the snooze, uh, you could be more rested. Okay, and um, uh, for your day, um, maybe more alert as I'm doing this. I'm wondering, you know, why do I hit uh, why do I hit the snooze, right? Um, and I spelled alert wrong, right? So, so uh, alert. Okay, I don't know where the eraser is on this. Uh, so whatever. Um, let's see if I can. No, nope, it won't go away either. Oh, that's great. All right. So I did this one. Okay. And in doing so, I give up all of these. All right. So the trade off in choosing this is that I'm going to refuse those benefits. And if you chose this one, then you give up on those benefits. All right. So this is, um, this is the next big idea in economics, really the, one of the biggest ideas. But whatever we do, the cost of doing that action is what we gave up to do it. And so the economists have a term for this, it's opportunity cost. And so opportunity cost, one way to think about this is 
it's your next best option. Okay, or the benefits from that next best option, right? So, you know, when back in 1997, I, I had to choose, uh, do I go to the University of Arizona or do I go to Arizona State University? I, I chose the U of A. My opportunity cost of choosing that was ASU. Okay, now I think I made the right choice. Maybe not, I don't know. But uh, in the time, in the moment, uh, that's what I chose and my opportunity cost was ASU. Okay, um, by continuing to live here in Tucson, I'm giving up living in, I don't know, Phoenix, right? That's where I was gonna move to, or Albuquerque, but it's really just one one thing, right? Another way to think about this is in terms of spending. If I spend, you know, $100 on a new set of headphones, what, what else could I be doing with that, right? And it's probably saving it, right? Not buying the headphones. Uh, so saving that $100. So the opportunity cost of the headphones is actually having $100 in my savings account. And growing for the future, or or really my brokerage account, right? So, uh, so here's a nice little cartoon somebody drew. Uh, opportunity cost: the kid's going to go to the library. Uh, it doesn't cost any money, but the opportunity cost is uh, to go to the mall. Okay. And you'll see things like this. Economists have this idea: there's no such thing as a free lunch. You see free things all over the place. Uh, so Denny's uh, enjoy a free Grand Slam breakfast. This was after the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and um, you know, when I drove by there, because I'm interested in this kind of thing, I saw a line. I saw people waiting in line, and you can actually calculate it. So let's say a person spent three hours standing in line for a breakfast. Let's say they went to two Denny's, right? And they got two um, Grand Slam breakfasts, right? Grand Slam breakfast. Okay. Um, and so three hours, let's say they let's say they could have worked. And they could have worked, well, the minimum wage now is ten dollars an hour. So let's say they could have worked for ten dollars an hour, so it's ten dollars times three hours. Okay, and so the real cost of of those breakfasts is thirty dollars, because they gave up thirty dollars in, in wages to get those two breakfasts. And if I divide the breakfast by two, that's fifteen dollars each. And we have to ask ourselves. Is it was it worth it? Right? Are those breakfasts? Is the price of this breakfast fifteen dollars? We know that it's not, so maybe not a very good uh, way of thinking about this. Okay, so there's really no such thing as a free lunch or breakfast. And you'll see that abbreviated that way all the time. Um, let me see if I can get rid of the yeah, discard. Okay, um, so r as I as I film this, uh, Chick Fil A just opened a new Chick Fil A in Northwest Tucson on Ina. And there was a line out in front, right? So people got uh, quote unquote free Chick fil A. Uh, and you can see these people in Ohio, they're lining up, camping out to be one of the first 100 customers. Uh, all of them received 52 meals. Um, is, it was the opportunity cost. And even if they're unemployed, the opportunity cost is, is time that they could spend looking for employment. Okay. So, you know, this is a little activity to, to think through. Um, in, in, you know, just think through your notes. What what if stuff was free, right? What are the benefits? What are the costs, right? If college was free, you know, it's gonna be more education, um, easier easier access, less debt, right? Um, but some of the costs is gonna be crowded. You may not get as good a quality education. It may give you a really hard test to get in, something like that, right? So you know, you can go through these uh, on your own here. Uh, I used to always think when I was younger, it'd be great if everything was free, right? So what happened if uh, it didn't cost any money to go to the doctor, right? Uh, this is the flip side. What if it, what if to drive on I-10, it now costs two dollars each way, right? What are some benefits? What are some costs? Let's say all radio was five dollars a month, right? Everybody had to pay to get uh, Pandora, right, in order to, to to have the ads go away or XM, which is awesome, right? And there's some benefits and some costs. Uh, flipping it around, if music and movies were free, uh, what would be the benefits? What would be the costs, right? So you can go through those. Um, and in thinking through this, we have a name for all of this issue, right? So we, we really, we recognize people want everything. So have unlimited wants, right? If you guys could make a list of all the things that you want, uh, that list would go on and on and on, okay? But the problem is you have limited resources to get those wants, right? And so uh, we can easily think that well, a lot of these things cost money. So we have this money problem. We don't have enough money to buy everything, okay? Uh, 
But what about somebody who's really, really wealthy, right? They also, you know, somebody like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, they're going to run out of time, okay? So you could run out of time uh, also, right? So this problem, the name of this is scarcity. It's the condition of scarcity. Essentially, we, we want everything. We have unlimited wants, but only limited resources to get those wants. Okay, so this is kind of a funny comic. This is the old days. This is now, right? I can afford all the video games. I just don't have time to play them, okay? All right, so biggest personal resource, just went over that. Uh, might be money, might be time. These guys face that time uh, issue just like we do. There's some comfort in that, okay? All right, so, so don't forget about time. All right, number three, rational people think at the margin. So make sure you write this down, put it in your notes. This, this comes up again and again and again. Marginal means additional. Okay, it's just a word that we use. You may have seen, um, you know, retail store talking about the margins, right? They're talking about the additional profit from selling an additional uh, shirt or whatever, right? And so you do this already. You think through what what it's called the cost benefit analysis, right? What um, what is the marginal cost of an action versus its marginal benefit? And so if you think about taking an additional class, uh, there's an additional uh, time, uh, there's additional money, uh, there's, um, well, those are essentially the, the two, right? And then the marginal benefit is uh, the skill or whatever you're trying to do with the class or learn. And uh, the hopefully you're, you're taking something for um, some kind of credit towards graduation or certification, right? So you're getting closer to that, right? And if the marginal cost is higher than the marginal benefit, you're not going to do it. And if the marginal benefit is higher than the marginal cost, you will do it. Okay? You will take the extra class or whatever it happens to be. Okay? Um, so, you know, with college student, we all know that studying is important, right? So why don't we study all the time? Well, it's because, uh, you know, one or two hours of studying is, is very worthwhile. You get a big benefit from it. But after three, four, or five hours, those additional hours aren't as beneficial as the first. So we tend to walk away. Okay? Let's do an athlete example. Okay? So this is uh, somebody practicing free throws. This is the total free throws. Okay? This is how many hours they spend on those. Okay? Now, if they don't shoot any free throws, that answer is going to be zero. Okay? They won't shoot any free throws. They're not going to make it. Now here, I'm going to do the uh, marginal, and here it's going to be the marginal benefit, right? How many additional free throws did I make in each hour, right? So I, I didn't make any free throws. I didn't shoot any free throws. The first hour, how many free throws did I make? Okay, it's going to be 45. The second hour, the way I do this, I say to myself, what do I have to add to this to get to here? Okay, so that's going to be uh, 25. Some students like to take the 70 and subtract 45. You can do that, right? So, so if you take, what they do is they go this minus this, and that gives them that answer. Okay, so 70 minus 45 also equals 25. That's the same thing. Okay, uh, now the third hour, 90 minus 70 is 20, or I got to add 20 to get to 90, and that's 20. Okay, so I'm going to fill this out here. Make sure you know how to do this. And, uh, 15 now and 7 additional free throws and just 3 additional free throws. So you can see the marginal benefits start to start to decline, right? And so if a, if a basketball player has something else to do, that 5th and 6th hour, you know, their arms are getting tired. This doesn't really, uh, it's not really that beneficial to keep shooting the fifth and sixth hour for in this scenario, right? And I figured that out by thinking about marginal benefits, right? I'm not going to get that much better, but that first hour, that's awesome, right? Second hour is pretty good too. Third hour is pretty good too. And so I would calculate, I would think about what are my marginal costs? What else could I be doing uh, up here at this level, right? And so if the benefit, uh, we see the benefit here, you're getting slightly better at shooting free throws. If the marginal cost is higher than that though, they're going to stop shooting free throws at four hours and go do something else. Okay. Number four, people respond to incentives. So this one's fairly obvious. The more uh, that somebody wants, that some, the more gain somebody's going to get, incentive is a positive or, or negative, um, the more they're going to do it, right? So the, here's, the, you know, you understand this. You're sitting through this class. You understand that the, the more education you get, 
uh, the faster you'll get to a million dollars. Okay, um, so it's pretty obvious. You can think about it this way: um, whose marginal benefit is is more, right? The rich person if they get paid overtime, or the poorer person, right? Well, the, it's the poorer person's marginal benefit is is going to be higher because they don't have as much money, they don't have as much wealth, right? For the richer person, overtime isn't isn't as much of an incentive. Okay, it's not saying it's not, but it's not as much. Okay. Uh, number five, voluntary trade can make everyone better off. Okay, now it has to be voluntary. You can't have a situation where somebody's got a gun up to somebody else's head. Uh, it has to be voluntary, but voluntary trade can make everybody better off. Okay, so you know one of the things we gain by profit. Right, so I, I went to Walmart this afternoon. I bought uh, some items. I paid for them. Uh, so Walmart profited by by take by selling me the products that they bought at a cheaper price. And then I benefited because I voluntarily chose those items. I didn't have to. Those items give me some some level of happiness. Okay, and the way we measure that is something called utility. Okay, utility is the economist word for uh, happiness. Okay, so as we get uh, uh, happier, we get more utility. Is what we're going to say. Okay, and so we measure it with money. We can also measure it with utility. Okay, so. Make sure we know that. Okay, so these are the two ways that we we put a value on something. What is the price? And we'll spend a lot of time thinking about price, and we'll spend a little bit of time thinking about utility. The utility is important, right? Uh, and don't confuse it with the kind of utilities like your electric bill. This is literally utility comes from the term utilitarian. So way back in the old uh, old days, John Stuart Mill and so forth. Okay, so utility. All right, so I, I put a eye pencil clip in uh, in there. Basically, we, we study markets, right? So a market is a place where there's buyers and sellers, uh, really more of a theoretical concept, but it could be like a shopping mall or an eBay situation, um, but it also could be like the real estate market, right? There's thousands of buyers, millions of buyers, really, if you expand it. Um, and, uh, and so markets are usually a pretty good way to organize economic activity, which is this invisible hand idea. Uh, yet again, so make sure you watch that I pencil clip. It's it's okay, right? The pencils turn into an invisible hand. It's amazing. Okay, uh, so you know, think about um, market uh, functionality, right? So in in the '90s, this is how you would rent videos, right? And nowadays, we know, uh, or sorry, uh, I skipped a I skipped a step, right? And then in the 2000s, uh, Blockbuster showed up and and kind of took out the independent video store, right? And then later on, uh, Netflix and Redbox take out. The blockbuster and so the term for this is creative destruction right the market uh, will allow resources to flow to their best gain uh, whether that's by firms or by co uh, consumers and uh, we see disruption we see disruption in, in a lot of these markets and, and it's actually good right? it's kind of painful because if you worked at blockbuster you lost your job but think about how many consumers benefited from the rise of Netflix the rise of, of Redbox you might be one of those uh, people, you know, smartphones are doing a similar thing, um, very disruptive uh, to a lot of markets. Uber and Lyft is uh, in the taxi business. Um, very exciting times to be be a human, unless of course you're losing your job, in which case you're having to really think through some of these hard uh, issues. Okay, and so uh, the invisible hand is is, is nice because it gives the consumers what they want potentially, but it can also have a, a another side to that. Okay. Um, so these are the six, uh, you can look at that in your notes, this is from the 1990s, it's kind of interesting. Uh, your cell phone does all of those things now, okay, amazing. Um, so I went over the first six here, the, um, there's, there's uh, four more, those, those tend to be um, macro type issues, so probably learn more about those in a, in a macro class, I mean, um, maybe we'll get a little bit of that, but otherwise, these are the six sort of ideas behind everything we're going to do in this class.